Hey guys, hello and welcome to this YouTube series. I'm Anisha Gupta and the theme of conversation today is whether or not the commodities are in a super cycle. Well, remember, it is one of the most Googled subjects right now, especially when some top Wall Street bankers have started talking about it and they have talked many of these commodity prices also on the higher side. So first of all, what exactly is a super cycle? What is the definition for that? Sustained spell of an abnormal strong demand growth is what is called a super cycle. It it has to happen in a broad based of uh, commodities which are in a bull market. Long swings also are caused by inefficient investment in the capacity and the rally in the prices can last for some years, decades or even more. Some of the super cycles and commodities have been known to last for 20 to 70 years as well. So well yes, we are talking about that kind of a super cycle but whether or not the conditions are strong for that whether is it just about the hot money which is flowing in is this a commodity boom which perhaps it sure is because we have seen many of these commodity prices continue to run up but the super cycles well let's talk about that first the 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 data shows that the late 19th century the super cycle in commodities which was seen during that time was because of industrialization in the us in 1950s it was because of the post-war construction in japan and in europe and then came the 1980s and the 1990s that is when it was about the great commodities depression and then you saw 2000 and 2014 yet again see a very strong demand in commodities and this was because of the BRIC countries like Brazil, Russia, India and China there was very strong demand in construction, infrastructure, huge population, the income to spend was higher and we saw all of that show itself in case of commodities. Now what we are seeing in 2020 and 2021 is a very strong commodity boom again. Starting from the month of March, many of the commodity prices have been running up. This is on back of very strong demand from China, very big recovery that we've seen there. End of pandemic perhaps is nearer and that sentiment has led to boosting of demand. Uh, reopening of economies, the fiscal stimulus, end of US-China trade war, remember we spoke about that for a couple of years recently and then it has been about the ultra loose monetary policies, all of that has supported prices. Let's talk about a couple of commodities which actually have done quite well for themselves. One is the overall metal sector and within this also it has been about copper and nickel which are trading at a multi-year highs. There is expectation that the whole climate ambition will support the demand. There is a lot of thrust right now on solar panels, wind turbines, electric vehicles, EV chargers, stations and this would mean that you will be looking at a very strong demand coming in here. But remember here as well the concrete policies in this regard are still awaited so we do not have a plan in place right now. Super cycle well yes it usually means that many of these commodities run up as I said sustainable abnormal demand growth is what we are looking at. So you have copper which has gained up by nearly 80% from its March lows it's trading at a 10 year highs right now. You have iron ore prices which are trading at a 10 year highs. Nickel is trading at a 6 year highs. Platinum is trading at a 6 year high, 7 year highs as well. So this, there is a long and short of this. One is that the mining companies have cut back sharply on capital spending. So that's a slightly longer term in sense of demand here because even as the demand will grow, the supplies will not come into the market as quickly. The other is that the mine supply disruptions due to COVID lockdowns, they have started to open up. So that supply will start coming back into the markets. Also, when you look at the copper prices in 2000, copper was trading less than $2,000 per ton. In 2011, we saw an all-time high of 10,190. The last 10 years or the decade, the copper prices have actually been moving within that range itself with the lows. But the last one year has seen a huge jump up come in case of copper yet again. The major reason for many of much of this recovery also is China. Remember 50 to 60 percent of demand for base metals iron ore comes in from China. So China is an important factor here and when you look at the stimulus mech package in 2020 it was a massive 6 trillion yuan and much of that money went into construction infrastructure demand for the metals was higher and is the reason you saw this disproportionate influx of money and the rise in commodity prices but the question really is that is china going to continue to repeat that kind of a stimulus measure maybe no 
The other is China also is keeping an eye on its property sector which has heated up. So you are not going to look at a very strong demand coming in from there as well. The third thing is that China has been soaking a lot of world surplus stocks of copper, iron ore, aluminum etc. Will China continue to do that? Maybe no because they are looking at their domestic markets right now and they have a huge inventory for many of these commodities. So despite uh, a very bullish outlook in many of these commodities, when you look at the overall S&P 500, uh, something like metals, ore and energy sector do not make up for a very strong percentage there and even a small percentage of allocation here can move the prices in a big way. So that is one thing that markets are keeping an eye on. The other is the fundamentals itself. Um, you know, when you look at a commodity boom or a quest, uh, you know a question which we are uh, putting on in sense of super cycle here, the fundamentals behind this rally in the commodity markets they also vary. So while we are looking at oil or copper here, it is about demand expectation. Uh, we spoke about the metals already. I want to talk, talk about the crude oil prices right now, where the world, uh, where the uh, Wall Street actually is very very bullish, approximately. 14 trillion dollars of uh, was pumped into global economy in the previous year that is 2020. This is a figure that the IMF has come out with. So China demand strength, weak US dollar also have been supportive factors and now with the economies opening up, vaccine rollout, ultra loose monetary policy, there are these support factors here. And then you have the, uh, you know, the banks talking to us. Energy aspect says that $100 per barrel is a possibility in next couple of years. You have similar statements from Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan saying that in coming years, a triple digit on crude is not ruled out. But not everybody is of the same view because remember, we have a high spare capacity from the OPEC and allies. They are voluntarily cutting output right now. So if the prices go out, they would definitely want to make use of that. The second thing is that as we are talking about renewables and EVs etc so why would you want to spend so much or invest so much in crude but the fact being that crude prices gave 20% negative returns last year and you have seen higher weightages allocations from monies come in for this one but here as well the question really is uh, the aviation hasn't opened completely right now not too many people are traveling right now so is the demand really back the pre-COVID level demand perhaps would be back by end of this year, but the prices already have run up by 30%. There are a lot of people betting on triple digit uh, crude oil prices right now, but uh, how, how sane or is it going to be a spike and back are some of the questions here. And it is not, and whether or not it's a sustainable rally, is, it, is the abnormal demand growth that the markets are expecting right now, will it continue to be seen? Will it actually go on like this? Will the central banks actually be able to put that kind of money yet again every year? Maybe no. And that is the reason markets are anticipating that this isn't a super cycle yet. It is, uh, everything is rallying, it is hot money, it is net speculative, long positions being there, there is this euphoria in the market, but whether or not it is sustainable, maybe for next 8 months, 12 months, 18 months perhaps, but a super cycle clearly needs way more years than that. And then it's not just about the non-agro commodities. Agriculture commodities that also are have seen a huge run up has been corn, soybean, wheat, sugar, coffee, all of these trading at a multi-year highs as well, but they also are ruled by their own dynamics. Soybean and corn have rallied to multi-year highs because China has been buying, because we have seen adverse weather, because people have been stocking up food uh, on, on fear that there could be a lockdown tomorrow and they would not be able to step out and buy it. But the US Department of Agriculture says that they already are expecting a record combined planting of soy and corn going forward because farmers would want to make use of these higher prices. So are we looking at lower supplies next year as well? Maybe not. So if we are looking at higher supplies, then these commodity prices also obviously some pressure coming in. So as I said, the maximum uh, gains that uh, markets are looking for in many of these commodities extend only up to an year or two next year. It is not going to be, uh, a, you know, a years or a decade of a rally that the markets uh, perhaps are looking at. The world tends to choose, change very quickly nowadays. People adapt to proxies. There is price sensitivity. There are cheaper resources and materials available. And there is technology which is always improving itself. So whether we will see that kind of a super cycle is a big question mark right now. While yes, some banks are definitely talking about that, but there isn't a consensus on that yet.